And I'm... And I'm back, everyone. It was Father Hubert's collar, and very nicely pressed it was, too. Here's your collar, Father. Thank you, George. You probably think it a little odd of me to make such a fuss. Oh, no. If I'd been living in the jungle for 11 years, I'd be completely screwy, too. Screwy? Yes, perhaps I am. Ever since my last visit to that village. Do you want to tell me what happened at the village? I took off my vows. I let myself be overwhelmed by the beauty of this unspoiled paradise. And in a moment of weakness, animal passion reared its rampant head. You know, you should be writing romantic novels. Did you experience some kind of a physical liaison at the village? Yes, I'm ashamed to admit it, but I found myself doing the monkey dance. I've never heard it called that before. And I didn't want to pry any deeper into Hubert's murky past. <laughs> yeah, very murky past. Now you've got your collar back, will you take me to the village? I still not finished my sermon. Look, father. I still don't know why you're so reluctant to visit that village, and it's none of my business. Whatever the reason, it can't be more important than saving Nico's life. You're right. I must be crazy. We must make haste if we're to reach the village before nightfall. By the time we reached the village, it was sunset. Hello, boys. Glad to see you're still wearing the underpants, what? <laughs> They're the best Christmas present we ever had, Father. Mine are too tight. Well, we all have our cross to bear. Uh, this is George. He has a request to make. I'm afraid I can't stay. Good luck, George. That's a relief. I never feel comfortable with him about. Me neither. These damn pants keep riding right up my butt. So, what do you want? My girlfriend has been bitten by a snake. So? Everyone in my family has been bitten by snakes. I was bitten by a dormouse once. She's real sick. I hoped your wise man might have medicine. Wise man? You must have the wrong village. Are you going to stand by and let my girlfriend die? Of course not. What do you think we are, savages? We'll start the preparations for a cremation feast. Father Hubert said there was a wise man in the village who could help me. Ooh, he must mean the old man, the shaman. I'd like to see the shaman, please. You can't just go walking in there and demand to speak to the shaman. Why not? You have to observe the protocol. The shaman demands tribute. Tribute? You mean, like a gift? That's right. The eternal question, what do you give a man who has everything? Stop. This is a private village. The guards looked as fierce as anyone can, wearing only their underpants. Give me a clue. What kind of things does your shaman like? Does he have a hobby, a favorite sport? You insult us. The shaman lives on a higher plane. Oh, right. Maybe a book would be more suitable. Or a jigsaw puzzle? Don't you just hate choosing presents for people you don't know? This cone could have a thousand uses. Yeah? Like what? A protective helmet? I don't think so. Would your wise man have any use for lipstick? Not in that color. Haven't you anything in black? Of course I don't. Look, I know it's not much, but I want your shaman to have this. Do you expect him to eat that? He's an old man, you know. He might choke. <laughs> this game certainly does have some funny points to it. This stone is what brought me here. That's a spirit stone. I wouldn't touch it if I was you. You're right. 
It could be cursed. Here, he'll like these biscuits. If you say so. Okay, obviously, there's a way you can get into the village, and that's to sh put the mine stone in the box when he comes back, and you'll see why in a minute. He liked the biscuits, especially the black ones. He wants to know if you've any more. Right. You can put different things in the box and get different responses to them. So let's try this first. I put my lucky piece of coal in the empty box. And give back to the guard. Here. I found some more of those biscuits for the shaman. I'll give them to him. Yeah, obviously it's glitched out. There's meant to be two conversations between him and the other guard, but there's not. The shaman didn't want the black rock. So he doesn't want that. So other ones have different responses. The cone was too big to put in the box. Let's save the game very quickly. Halfway, I no, just have to hope halfway done. Not bad, is it? No, I don't want to go on menu. So let's put the dart in the box. I dropped the poison dart into the box with just a little itch of misgiving. Here, I found. I'll give them to him. So he asks you what planet you're from, and then what do you do for entertainment in the jungle? And he does documentaries, and but he says how they be on TV and shit like that. It didn't work. What? Your feeble attempt to assassinate the shaman by concealing a dart within this box. I put the statue in the empty box. Here, I found... I'll give them to him. The shaman said to give you back this statue. He didn't want it? He's already got one. I drop the tequila worm into the empty box. Here, I found some more of those biscuits for the shaman. I'll give them to him. So, I thought it would be nice to show you guys the kind of responses you get for each item. Instead of giving him the actual thing you're meant to give him. He didn't want the little worm. He's a vegetarian. Instead of giving him what you're meant to give him, that's the Mayan stone. So this one you'll get, um, let's try that. I didn't think that that was such a good idea. Okay, so let's put, it was Nico's lipstick. I put the lipstick in the box. So I'll give it to him again. Here. I found some more of those biscuits. I'll give them to it. The shaman kept your gift of wax. He was pleased with it. Can I go see him now? He wasn't that pleased. Okay, so this is the funny one that I always found funny. I tucked the bright red panties in the empty box. Here. I I'll 
give them to him. The shaman was pretty mad about those panties. Well, I didn't mean to offend him. You didn't. He was disappointed that they didn't fit. <laughs> right, and last but not least, let's give him let's give him the right item. And this is the Mayan stone. You can tell it's right. Change of music. I put the Mayan stone in the empty box. Here, I found some more of those biscuits for the shaman. I'll give them to him. The shaman wants to talk to you. I hoped he would. Well, it's been nice to talk to you guys. Right, I, there's a cutscene coming up, but and I'm gonna be quiet for it because there's no point talking for it. It was a basket full of rocks. I couldn't think of any reason to steal the villagers' rock collection. The man was busily weaving a cloth. That man wasn't the one I'd come looking for. It was the focal point of the village, the communal cooking fire. The fire was too hot to approach, even if I'd wanted to. So, just for Arkham's sake, we're just going to reduce the volume just a little bit. That's it. That's better. The old guy was obviously the shaman of these people. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Please, sit down. Welcome, George. Thanks. It has long been foretold that a white man would bring the Coyote Stone to this village. Why is Father Hubert so reluctant to visit the village? I don't know. He used to come here a lot, but then he just stopped. You'd think he want to spend some time with his kids. Did you say Father Hubert has kids? Three girls and five boys by my reckoning. All conceived in the same week at the Feast of the Monkey Dance. My girlfriend's been bitten by a snake. And you want me to heal her? That's the idea. Can you do it? I'm not sure. My gums aren't what they used to be. Listen, my girlfriend's in a coma. Please, old man, give me the root. What root? Father Hubert told me of a root which could cure the bite of the river snake. Tell there's nothing sacred with these people. That was a secret, known only to members of my tribe. If that root is my chance of saving Nico's life, then I want it. Fast. There is time yet, George Stobart. Time to learn why you were called here. Fine. If I listen to your story, then will you give me the root? The eel travels far, but still returns to the place of his spawning. And look, I'm running a tight schedule, so can you skip Enjoy the this cutscene, guys. I'll be back with you soon. Many years ago, when the world was young, the great god and king Quetzalcoatl was defeated by trickery and deceit. His enemy Tezcatlipoca took his place as leader and demanded terrible human sacrifices. A group of loyal priests found a way to trap Tezcatlipoca. But his powers were so great, they knew he would not remain trapped forever. His time of incarceration would end with the eclipse which marked the close of the fifth age. So the priests fashioned three obsidian stones which contained the power to seal the mirror for all time. But before the stones could be put in place, they were seized by the invading Spanish. But how did they trap Tez... 
the evil god. They built a pyramid which they told Tezcatlipoca was dedicated to him. At its center, they fashioned a huge mirror of perfectly smooth obsidian. Luring him into the pyramid with praise and flattery, they used sorcery to ensnare him in the mirror. Suppose I was to believe there was anything in your story, other than the rambling delusions of a seriously wacky old man. Suppose I was to swallow it, hook, line, and kitchen sink. What then? Then you would see that the fate of the human race rests upon your shoulders. Do I get anything to help me combat Tezcatlipoca? Like what? Well, a magical weapon? Get real, John. <laughs> what happened to the stones? They were taken by the Spanish to the coastal town that is now called Guaramonte City. Only one stone reached Spain. The other two fell into the hands of buccaneers. The Jaguar stone was captured by an English captain, El Draco. The Eagle stone was taken by a pirate called Ketch. The third stone, the Coyote stone, reached Spain safely. That is the stone in your possession. There's an eclipse of the sun due very soon, isn't there? Correct. The eclipse which marks the ending of the fifth age will come before the next full moon. Less than two weeks. I didn't really believe that Tez Catlipoca would return, but I figured Karzak's plans were in some way connected. Tell me more about the Jaguar Stone. Many centuries ago, the port of Guaramonte was entered by a ship flying Spanish colors. The captain, the man known as El Draco, sent soldiers ashore. Only when the soldiers arrested the mayor did the people realize that they were English privateers. The mayor was held hostage while the soldiers looted and plundered the city. Amongst the treasures they stole was the Jaguar Stone. Where is the Jaguar Stone now? I suppose El Draco took it back to his homeland, across the Great Sea. To England? Tell me more about the Eagle Stone. The stone was loaded onto a galleon with many valuable artifacts plundered by the Spanish. But shortly after leaving harbor, a terrible squall blew up and damaged the ship. The ship was intercepted by a bloodthirsty pirate, Captain Ketch. Ketch made short work of overpowering the crew, stealing the treasure, and sinking the Spanish ship. Where's the Eagle Stone now? Nobody knows for sure. Ketch retired from piracy and bought an island in the Caribbean. What do I do when I find the stones? Bring them here to me and I shall prepare you. The stones must be taken to the heart of the pyramid. Only there can they be used to seal the gate by which Tezcatlipoca will return to this world. Can you show me the way to the pyramid of Tezcatlipoca? Not until you possess all three stones. Now do I get the root? Here, take it. Make haste if you wish to save the girl's life. The hummingbird sings to me of death to come. Now you're talking in riddles again. Listen, is it okay if I crash here? I've got no chance of finding my way through the jungle in the dark. You're welcome, but you probably won't get much sleep. Tonight's the night of the monkey dance. I left the village at dawn and stumbled back through the jungle in a post-party days. It was just like sneaking back to my parents' house when I was younger. Hey, except Oakland didn't have monkeys or parrots. Okay, uh, welcome back everyone. Now I'm just gonna get to the end of this bit and then... Well, get through this bit and then start the video again. Father Hubert, a man with a mission. The shaman thinks you should go visit your kids. So, he told you. Look, Hubert, having a, well, an extended family is nothing to be ashamed of. If I was you, I'd be ashamed of not being there for them. It's that damned monkey dance that led me astray. Yeah. A sight like that must be difficult to forget. I've got the root, Hubert. What are you waiting for? Give it to the gal. 
right. It was a water jug. I couldn't steal from a priest. Huh. I wondered what Hubert had used to make his candles. I didn't have any use for Hubert's candles. It was Father Hubert's personal altar. I thought it best not to defile the altar while Hubert was looking after Nico. The snake bite had affected Nico badly. Nico, I brought you this root. Oh. Uh. No way was she going to be able to chew the root. I needed to give her the antidote in a more digestible form. Okay, so as soon as we prepare the antidote, we will do what's necessary to... Well, I'll start my next video. There was nothing else I wanted to ask him. Outside the doorway, the ladder led back down to terra firma. Okay. It was the root which would cure Nico's snake bite. No, that's wrong. Two round stones were carefully balanced on a wooden structure. The juice from the root was soaking into the ground. Okay, so you have to give it to her in a, in a way that she'll be able to take it. So, you use the cone on the press. The cone was ideal as a makeshift container. Okay, so when we come back, we'll be giving Nico the the um, f antidote and venturing on to the ne next part of the game. So, stay there, I'll be right back. <laughs> 